Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, we have an amazing guest. He is back for his second time, and it is Mark St Stouffer. He is an author, and he's here to talk about his second book that is recently published, and it is called The... Oh, I'm going to tell you the American name for it. And he can tell you, he can tell you how the actual title and it's, for, it's about prophecies and it's an amazing book and it goes into a lot of great dialect and teachings and he has so much to offer and to share with us. And he's here today to talk about his book and to talk about what came out of it and his inspiration from it and what he hopes to teach others through his his books and the messages that will actually change your life and change the way you look at the world and actually will help you grow as an individual. And that's what we all strive for, to become the best version of ourselves. And he's here to show you how. So Mark, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm so glad you came back. Uh, it's always a pleasure. So tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. So I recently retired. I um, had a career as a civil engineer, and that was a good career. And um, and but you know, some oh, about five years ago, I just started. I've I started writing. I've always enjoyed studying the Bible, and uh, I felt called by God at a certain point on a topic that was not a topic that of my study in general. And um, but I studied the Bible a lot, but I. I had no intention of writing a book or it turned out to be a series of books, which are to J Jewish people about um, a verse in John 5, 39, where Jesus said he, he was speaking to Jewish religious leaders who were opponents of his um, in, in that day. And he said, you guys search the Bible, you search the scriptures. And it's, and of course, at that time, there was only the Old Testament. And he said, it speaks of me. The book is about me and my coming. And so that's what my series of books is about, is um, looking, studying the Old Testament. And is, is his claim true? Or how strong is Jesus's claim? How much does it speak about him, you know? Yes. And so anyway, the second book is out, and it's a survey of the messianic prophecies of um the prophecy there's prophecies about history and there's prophecies about him about the messiah and yes. in fact there's prophecies about two comings of the messiah and so my book looks at both sets of comings the comings of um when jesus you know and who jesus would be and what he would do uh these were written hundreds of years before he came and, and then there's prophecies about the end of time when the messiah returns to make everything right on earth and um, so that's what this book is about. And, you know, there's, Stacy. there's a lot of books about prophecy today, and they're very popular and um, about the end of time. And, uh, you know, this modern world is crazy and a lot of books about um, when Jesus will come back in the end of time and, and you know, how well does our crazy world today and the and incredible technology, including technology of destruction and warfare, how does that line up with some of these prophecies? So my book's a little different because it's focused on um, partly on that, but but really mainly on the first coming and all those prophecies about who the Messiah would be. And we look at, well, because there's two sets of prophecies and they're, they're distinct. And, uh, you know, this conquering king that will come at the end of time, but also this humble servant that would come one day and die... Uh, for uh, for mankind he would die not anyone else would die and so i look and see well how well does what jesus did and what he said line up with those prophecies but i write these books to jewish people um to take a look at jesus's claim and and through the old testament how strong again is his claim but i also write them for christians because i know in a lot of churches the focus is more on the new testament Mm -hmm. And um, but the Old Testament, as my wife says, is a prequel to the yes. New Testament. And she's right. And, um, you know, you can't fully understand or appreciate the New Testament without the, the Old Testament. So the book is all secondarily, but importantly, also for Christians, Christians that don't know a lot about the Old Testament. So but this wasn't a subject that I 
intended to write on, but I um, really felt strongly called by God to, to write these books. I love it. I love it. Now, did you, were you always a devout Christian or was it the last, the, maybe these last coming years where it, you know, something inside you really, really provoked you to take this journey, you know, to really share with others what you've encountered and learned through your own experiences and research and so forth. Uh, so growing up, I was in a um, traditional church and it really didn't suit me. Um, I didn't get it. And, uh, you know, and so anyway, but after college, um, I felt called supernaturally by God in my heart. Um, what am what are you going to do, Mark? Yeah. Uh, you know, are you going to let me in your life or, or, or not? And, um, it was very strong him letting me know he was there, but not forcing his way in, but, um, letting me know he was there and calling me to make a choice and i chose uh very meekly to open the door a crack to him to come in and uh you know and everything changed and um so i've been doing my best to walk with him of course imperfectly for 40 years now and but i've studied the bible all those years and so so my book is based on my study but also my life and which i think you know is your um where, where you're coming from in your life is my life and God blessing me and providing for me and leading me and helping me to grow and to heal and to change and, and all those things. And just the ups and downs of life. He was there to help me get through the, the difficult moments. He brought me a beautiful wife. Um, mm -hmm. So the book is based on my, um, on my study of the Bible, but also my understanding of him through my life through his love in my life. Now, what are you hoping to accomplish with this book? Like, what are you trying to really get across to the people who want to read this book? And who are you, you focusing on that you really like to, you know, have, what audience do you really want to be kind of drawn to your book that you think will get the most out of it? So primarily, I would love it for Jewish people to read my book. Now that's... Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of like uh, the soldiers landing on the beach, beaches of Normandy. There's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, opposition to that. Jewish people are not interested in hearing about Jesus, you know. Um, just like Christians maybe aren't interested in hearing about uh, a cult, person from a cult who's a total believer in their heart, mm -hmm. um, in their cult. And, you know, I don't want to name any, but... Um, you're just not interested because you believe in Jesus. Well, Jews don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> They're not interested in hearing people tell them about Jesus, really. And maybe they'd be polite, but they're not open to that. So um, so this is a difficult, my primary audience is them. And that's difficult, but it's not impossible because God can, he can remove obstacles. And so, but there's a certain number of Jewish people, and you said your mom had a Jewish background, actually, that yeah. there's a certain number that are open to whatever is true in the right. Bible. What 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 is God's actual message? Not what does this pastor say, or this rabbi, or this, uh, you know, bishop, or whoever, but what is God really saying? What right. is the gospel of John? What is John really writing about? What is Moses really writing about? And Samuel, and so on, and because, you know, rabbis and pastors know, have studied and know some things, but they don't know everything. And they're not always right. And we know that because they disagree with each other. Yeah. And even uh, there's different, and I don't mean rabbis and, and, and bishops. I mean, bishops and bishops disagree. Mm -hmm. So, but so people that are somewhat skeptical, which, you know, Americans tend to be, I am. And, but, but know that God has a message and they want to know what that is. And so there are some Jewish people who want to know what, okay, because uh, I maybe mentioned this last time, Christian history is really bad towards the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're really familiar with the 20th century, but there were uh, 19th centuries before the 20th century and, I'll, and that the, there was great anti-Semitism in Europe, in the Middle mm -hmm. East, in Asia, 
And it was um, coming from secular governments, but also to a very large degree was coming from the Christian church. Horrible things mm -hmm. that we don't know about, and that's okay, but the Jews know about them. And so they really are not interested in Jesus, mainly because of the, how awful Christianity, Christian history is towards them. But, you know, for those people who think deeply, who think critically and who say, okay, yeah, that's all true, but does that really reflect Jesus? Because mm -hmm. none of that history came from his, in no way did he advocate violence towards the Jews or anyone. It's not yeah. in there. And so some people are like skeptical and say, yeah, I know that Christian history is bad, but I also know that Christians today are friends of the Jews. But what mm -hmm. is what about Jesus? You know, for those people that think a little bit critically and want to know that that's who this book is for. And that's a long winded answer, but that's my heart. And we uh, pray in my home church. Uh, we have a home church and we pray that these books wind up in the hands of Jewish people. And God has been doing that, um, you know, that I know of in a number of cases and um, not a large scale, but a number of cases. And that's uh, very um, exciting to me. Oh, definitely. I've known many people who were just looking for guidance, looking for answers, looking for, you know, something more in their life. And they weren't really sure what that more was, but they they weren't they they weren't fulfilled with the with the way their life was going, the way their heart felt inside. Something was missing, and you know. So and then I found people also they were going through crisis, and they were looking for healing. They were looking for a better way of life, you know, a life you know, where they they could feel that you know they they were you know that they could be you know, that redemption, you know, could be taken upon them, taken off of them, that they can, re, re, you know, they could have redemption and they can, you know, and they can live a happy, healthy and fulfilling life, you know, and uh, many of them turn to Jesus, many of them turn to, to God for, for that guidance, you know, and it changed their lives and, you know, and, and they, and, and now they, they live by the word of God. They live by Jesus. They live in, and they feel fulfilled. They feel happiness. They feel when, you know, when they're lost, they know that there's someone there that's going to hear them and, and answer to them. And, uh, it's been a change in, in many people's lives. Cause a lot of times, you know, you know, like my, my family, my, my mother's side of the family, they didn't, they weren't religious at all, you know? And, uh, so they, you know, my, my, um, my mother was always looking for that answer. You know, she was looking for that guidance because they didn't really give them that religious background that, you know, and, and when she got older, she was kind of looking for, for something. She didn't know what until it was introduced to her. And then she was like, this is what I want. You know, and then she just, you know, geared her life in Christian towards Christianity and, you know, with a devout Christian since then. But beforehand, you know, she, you know, they didn't even have a menorah in the house. That's, you know, they it was there was no no religion in in in, in her household. And and many people I've I've heard, you know, very similar where, you know, it's, you know, if they come from, people are, are looking for something. Everyone needs faith. When you have the, the worst things that happen to you in life, you know, and, and where do you go? You say, God, please help me. You know, you, you don't have to be even be religious, but when crisis happens, where do people look? Where do people look for, for hope, for, for healing? They, they look for a higher power. And, you know, and I, I think it's good that you're writing these books and, and you're giving people the guidance, you know, that there is hope, that there is, an, there is, there is a higher power that they can, you know, look upon. And that, you know, not every religion, even if you come from a, a religious family too, it may not be the right religion for you. You know, um, you have to really feel it, I think, in your heart. Yeah, I, I just uh, agree. And that's been my experience. So this world is broken. And it's hard and, and uh, there's good days, but there's a lot of really rough times in our lives. And some of it's our fault and some of it's not. Yeah. Some of it's other people's fault. Some of it just happened. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, your, some of your health problems and uh, God is the answer the only answer. Right. Uh, 
for for the deeper issues and problems of this broken world. And uh, when we come to God, he helps us in life. And sometimes in miraculous ways, sometimes in little ways. And I believe he um, loves us more than we understand. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to have a good life, but it's a broken world. And there's reasons for that. And that's beyond this podcast, but, uh, but he helps us in life. Uh, but he, but deeper than that, he gives us peace, yeah. peace with him. Mm -hmm. which is more important than, uh, you know, maybe financial struggles um, that take years to work out of or yeah. addiction struggles, that he helps us with those things. But to have peace with him, health issues is more important than those things. And one day we all will pass away. But mm -hmm. you, uh, the, that is the beautiful message is that um, Jesus has provided a way for all of us to right. go to heaven, to, to be right with God. And right. we can be right with him in our heart and in our lives and experience his love now. And we can know uh, that we will, we'll go to a better place where it won't be a broken world uh, right. when we die. And that makes all the difference in life. And that's been my experience. And I think that's what you're describing. And that's been my experience. Yes. And and what do you have to say? Well, I know a lot of people that have even grown up in religious families and they have given up on Christ. They have given up on God. They have given up on religion because obstacle after obstacle has occurred in their life or they've gone through tragedy and nothing has gotten better. So they believe, you know, it, it, there can't be a God, it, you know, there can't be a Christ, you know, because look what's happening to me. You know, he, you know, if there was a Christ, if there was a God, he wouldn't let this happen to me, you know, and, and what's your response to that? Well, I don't know if I have a great answer. I, I've seen that and it makes me so sad. Yeah. Um, my one, maybe my best answer is that um, moms and dads, but and grandmas, mm -hmm. uh, need to pray every day for that their child or their grand grandchild. And um, God has a timing, and it's different than ours. And their um, whatever it is that caused them to doubt God may not go away today. It might go away. He, God may come in and solve that issue and reveal himself to them today but it may take years it may take decades but he will he has a different timing than us but that is it, it is a deep i've seen it and it's it makes me sad yeah it makes me sad too i think i think every you know every journey we go on there is a reason for it you know and i think we learn from it we grow from it you know, but I think if you, if you don't have, if you don't have some type of faith in your life, it, it's very hard to get through those, those hard times in life. You know, I, I think, you know, faith helps get you through those hard times and gives you hope for the future and what's to, to come, you know, and that, that, you know, you know, faith is a ball of positivity, you know, and, you know, it brings you to a, 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 a higher light you know, and it, and it, it gives you, it also takes away the fear, the fear of death, the fear of, you know, of a lot of things, you know, it makes you a stronger person. And, um, you know, so with your book, you know, are these some of the things that you're trying to accomplish, not only giving people a perspective to, to change, you know, and to open up to Christianity, but also to look at the positive aspects of it also? You know, not really in regards to this life, but yes, in regards to the next life and that how strong Jesus's answer is to God's way to get to heaven, which is through forgiveness by him paying the price for my sins, which are many and everybody has sinned. And um, when you, when you get into the Bible and see that that's this, it's easy to say that real quickly and people have heard it so many hundreds of times that maybe it rolls off our backs to mm -hmm. some degree and we don't hear those words anymore but right but actually there's a, a genius to it and it has to be that way and that's his way and it it adds up and so my books do present that and and also uh present 
um, to some degree how loving God is. Yeah. Which is is very important to understand. We and as I said, we can't understand fully in this life, but um, we can get an idea of it. Right. He's not like us. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for us to, in many ways, and it's hard for us to understand him. Now, with your first book and your 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 current book, is it kind of like a sequel, or is it totally two different concepts? Yeah, it is a sequel. It's a series. There's two more books coming, but um, the first book covered a very important aspect or element in the Old Testament, which is the sacrificial system. Mm -hmm. And so what I, the, I raised the question, okay, let's look at that in depth. Let's look at the, uh, all the details of the sacrificial system. Now, do those symbolize what Jesus did? Mm -hmm. Is there, once he came and did what he did and died right. on the cross and rose from the dead three days later, once he did that, were, were all those details pictured in the cross so that was i looked at that and then i also looked at um a second area which are you know there's some um men in the um in the old testament like david and moses and um and others that daniel that did some things that were very similar to things that jesus did mm -hmm. and so you know with any work of of literature fiction nonfiction well really mainly fiction there's foreshadowing and there's a certain character and then you you see some of the things that he did being played out by the main character later in the story right and there's a reason the author does that there's a lesson to be learned by the mm -hmm. behavior of that character and um and then it's also just for the enjoyment of the reader it's really neat to see oh i see yeah. what the author was doing that's foreshadowing it's just fun for me right. so we see that in the bible with uh there's very strong foreshadowing of Jesus through some of the great heroes in the Old Testament. So those two topics or elements of the Old Testament are covered in my first book. And then here in the second book, I shift to Messianic prophecy. Mm -hmm. um, in the third book, I'm going to look at God's plan to rescue humanity. He has a plan and it unfolds in the Old Testament. And Without a doubt, uh, everyone would agree that in in the Bible that plan includes the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But we look then we look at well, is that Messiah Jesus? Mm -hmm. Is he the one that fits God's plan um, as it is laid out in the Old Testament? And then in the uh, fourth book, I'm going to actually look at the Old Testament as a piece of literature, and mm -hmm. uh, it's very interesting to me. I hope it's interesting to other people too, but. Hmm. I like to read, but um, the Old Testament ends with none of the plot lines resolved. They're all open and very little progress made in God's plan. You know, the, in the fourth chapter of the Bible, famously, um, Adam and Eve are out of paradise in the Garden of Eden, and they're in, in the broken world that we know today. Hmm. And the first child born, Cain, kills his younger brother, Abel as their adults. And it was over uh, Abel offering um, sacrifices that God found pleasing and Cain, Cain's sacrifices being rejected by God and Cain becoming jealous. And he had an anger problem and a violence problem. And so we, everybody knows that story. But in the very last book of the Old Testament, God is yeah. very angry with the Jews um, and at this point, they were a thousand years into the um, Mosaic law, the law that God gave to Moses, that he gave to the Jews. There are a thousand years into it, like a thousand and fifty years. And a lot of, large part of the law is the sacrificial system. And God is very displeased with mm -hmm. them. I mean, just shocking language. He literally said he was going to rub vomit on the faces of the priests. It's, he's trying to get everybody's attention. And the issue is the same as what Cain did. He is not pleased with their sacrifices, even though they had explicitly explained mm -hmm. how to give sacrifices, why to give sacrifices. They were right. doing it wrong. They, their hearts were in the wrong place. So I raised the question, how could God end his book there? 
It makes yeah. no sense. And then we look at, well, does the New Testament answer those open plot lines that are open mm-hmm. very early in the book of Genesis? Right. How good are the answers? And we just do a literary review of it. So I'm excited about that. And that's half written, but it'll be out in a few years. But that's the fourth book. So wow. they're all the same subject is how well does the Old Testament foreshadow Jesus, you could say, but they're different by reviewing different elements from the Old Testament. I love it. I love it. That's great. Now, you know, really, it really seems like a lot of the, the material you cover in your book could really give people a new perspective on life and actually give people guidance on, on how they should live their lives as well and really open up to different different ways that they could really focus on to improve their overall life. Is that one of the things that you're trying to accomplish too? Or you feel that these books can accomplish? You know, no, but (laughs) um, indirectly, because my books are kind of one more root level than that. Mm -hmm. My books are more saying, this is real. The Bible is real. Let's dig into it and look at it. And then, uh, you know, that builds a faith, a foundation of faith that, wow, Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want people to get into it and and see it and see, okay, this is really from God. He's real and he shows himself in this book in a very strong way. And then after that comes people saying, okay, I want to follow God. So that's a step they take afterwards. I have a friend who uh, is a great Christian man and has been used by God to do great things and start um, inner city ministries. And he had a really difficult growing up in the 60s mm-hmm. and uh, drug addiction, selling drugs in jail and just, um, you know, I'm understating it. And finally, he turned to God. And um, when he turned to God and turned to Jesus, he said, well, God, um, you." he just said, I'm giving you everything. I've ruined yeah. my life. I've made a mess of it. I'm giving it to you. It's mm-hmm. yours. And, Mm -hmm. um, and so he had this really strong conversion and, um, and amazing what God did to bless him and to use him to bless other people. So I think that's kind of what you're saying. And I agree, but my books are kind of, like I said, one notch below that. Right. Right. They're a precursor. Yeah. I I definitely feel like they could lead up to that for sure. Cause I think once people dive into your books, they're, they're going to really get the knowledge they need and really start to see things in a different light. You know, I think it's going to really be an eye. It seems like an eye opener, your, your series of books, you know, but it really, you know, makes people go from one perspective of living life to really open their eyes and see the possibilities of, you know, if they change their lives and they start change and changing the way they believe and think that, you know, it it can lead to many different things because all you need is just a little bit of guidance, a little bit of understanding, and then a whole new world could open up for you. You know, it's like you open one door and then all the doors open up. And it seems like, you know, that your books are kind of like the door to open, you know, and lead and it kind of opens, you know, it's helping to open all the other doors, you know, because the knowledge you provide in these books really give people an understanding, you know, and, and also, uh, you know, if they, if they didn't grow up with, with, you know, living life for Christ, you know, they understand the concept of, you know, of the old Testament and how, like you said, it kind of coincides with, you know, the new Testament, you know, but not everybody thinks like that because when you do go into a church, they're always talking about the new Testament, you know, they never, well, they'll reference here and there, but you won't hear it a lot. In, in church, you'll hear mostly about the New Testament because that's where Jesus is. But if you understand the Old Testament and you understand the, the principles and and where, you know, then you start to see things differently. And it kind of brings you, when you have a better understanding and you actually have a stronger um, faith because you under, you know, it's not understanding bits and pieces. You, it kind of gives you the, the whole, the whole thing. And then, so then you're able to really pull things together. Like you said, put the pieces to the puzzle earlier on. It, it puts those pieces together. So you actually have the completed puzzle in front of you. Yeah. Right. I agree exactly. And, and um, you know, when it comes to what you were talking about, uh, when you asked me the question, you know, people's lives and 
really being transformed for the better um, by following God. No, that's not um, exactly what my book is about, but there are a lot of books about that and some good books. And But also I, I would say to people, if you're starting to uh, grow in your faith, uh, read books, yes. I, as I said, I love to read, but also I, it's very important to have some close Christian friends and go to a, a good church where they teach the Bible and, um, you know, you get involved in fellowship. You get involved with close friendships with Christians and not just Christians. You keep all your friends, but you get yeah. some with Christians and you uh, you tell them what's going on in your life. And, hey, what do you think about this passage? This is scary. Yeah. Um, God scares me in that, you know, and talk about those things and talk about your positive experiences. Pray together pray for each other, uh, yeah. open up when you're struggling with whatever area of life. And that's as important as reading books as um, being really close with some Christian people. So yeah. that your people out there that uh, your walk will walk with God will take off when you add that to it. Oh, for sure. Definitely. Definitely. That's what I always liked about the Christian church too, is that you, you really, you can, you can, you know, grow a very close bond in with a lot of people. And there's a, a lot of activities to get to know one another and to share with one another where you don't find that in, 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 in a lot of churches, you know, um, in different faiths, but you do find it in the, in the Christian faith. Yeah. Yeah. And do things together, like go together to the soup kitchen or to yeah. serve in some way to clean up trash i don't know but to serve other people that's part right. of it too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely now when it comes to your books um can can someone dive into your second book or would you suggest reading the first book to get the the most out of it and then go into the your your current book yeah if they are interested in this subject um it's best to start with the first book but if they're really interested in prophecies about the messiah then they can start in the second book mm -hmm. now where can people find your books so that mostly on amazon that's the easiest way and i also have a website which links to amazon you can't buy them on my website but yeah just go to amazon and i have um paperback i have an audio book i know some people uh prefer that and i have an ebook and i have the ebook price very low on the books um not i'm not really making money but to get uh, get the word out that god has yeah. shared with me so i think that's great now if you had to take everything we discussed today and you wanted to really emphasize on some important turning points what are some things you really like to emphasize to the listeners well you know the what comes to my mind when i hear you ask that is that how good god has been to me Mm -hmm. And he has had his eye on me, uh, watched me and waited for my moment to come and introduce himself to me. And has just wow. blessed me so much. And I believe, you know, the, the um, Apostle John said call, he calls himself in his books, the disciple whom Jesus loved right. because um, Jesus loved him. And that just meant everything to me. And he spent three and a half years with Jesus. But I think that, um, so when he thought about himself, his identity, if you said, who are you? He would say, I'm loved, but I know Jesus and he loves me. So he called himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. But I don't think he was bragging at all. I just think it just meant the world to him. And But yeah. I believe that God feels that way about every single person, whether they're a Christian or not. That's his heart towards everybody. And yeah. um, so- that's, I guess, the most important thing. And he, that, and he has provided evidence in the form of prophecy that's that's hard evidence, that's tangible evidence, uh, and just sheer logic in the Bible. It makes sense. It explains our world. It explains us and our problems and our predicament. And so I think those two things is God, how much he loves each of us, me, and everyone, everyone and um how he has provided evidence of who he is he's the god of the bible yeah he is and if people go on amazon what is the title of your book tell everybody once again so they remember okay yeah the the mashiach i'll spell that um 
it's just the Hebrew spelling of the word Messiah, but it is spelled M-A-M-A-S-H-A-I-H. Um, and, uh, you know, and my name is Mark with a K, Stouffer, um, with O-U-F-F-E-R, like the frozen food. So um, anyway, if you type those things in, you'll it'll come up. And where can people find you on your website? Yeah, um, my website is lovingkindnessofadonai.com. That's a, uh, that's a lot. And my computer friends said it wasn't a good name, but I said I like it. So <laughs> it's one word, lovingkindnessofadonai.com. Adonai is A-D-O-N-A. Oh, my gosh. A-D-O-N-A-I. Anyway, that's another Hebrew word for for God, and um, that it would be good to visit there. I really don't have anything for sale, but you can contact me there and find out information about me. There's some um, videos of Jewish people who received Jesus on there, and they just tell how he reached them and um, just some information information about the books. I love it. I love it. Well, this has been amazing. Before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to add to to uh, what we talked about today that you'd like to the listeners to know? You know, not really. I just enjoyed uh, my, both times speaking with you. And um, I recall last time after we did the podcast, we, we spoke for well over a half an hour. And um, I appreciate you and serving people from your heart. And uh, that's what you motivates you. And so I enjoyed it again. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, it's been great having you on the show. I am so excited, you know, that you are working on your, your third book and you have these two books out. And everybody remember that you can get it on Amazon. So, you know, you check Mark's books out, you'll love them. And I love, you know, the, the topic that you write about. And I love, you know, how it's such an eye opener. And, and really anybody could, could you know, pick up your book. And, and because it's really, it's, it's an eye opener. And, and, it, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a book of knowledge, you know. And uh, many people I know like to read about other religions also just because, you know, they're curious. They want to know. You know, they want to understand. So these books are great, you know, not just for converting Jews into Jesus, but I think just to understand, it's a great comprehension and, and understanding of what the Bible is based on and, you know, how it brought us to the New, Te New, New Testament, you know, so I, I, I commend you for, for doing, you know, all the research and writing that you've done so far. And I look forward to book number three. I'm very excited about that. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Well, you have a great day, Mark, and thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much.